We're going to go back to ECW, the early days of ECW. So who recommended you for ECW? <clears throat> and did you just miss out on Eddie Gilbert's tenure as Booker? Yes. Uh, my referee, Pee-wee, John Pee-wee Moore, he, re- he said there's a company that Eddie Gilbert books out in Philadelphia. You should give him a call. I said, nah, uh, if they don't call me in, not calling them. And then about a week later, Paul, uh, we had a mutual friend, Linda Rufo, is a photographer. And she was friends with Paul, Paulie. Paul Heyman. And she said, Paul Heyman wants to get over you. Can I give him your number? I said, yeah. He called me to book me or for a future thing called World Wrestling Network. Yeah, it's uh, Jackie Crockett's one. That, yeah. That's Crockett yeah. involved. Oh, it's no, not Jackie. Sorry. Um, who's the main one? Uh, Jim Crockett. Jim Crockett. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, he, he was talking to me about that. Uh, Paul, he was. Talking to me about WWN. Uh, and then uh, about a week after that, a friend of mine said, call Todd Gordon. He's a sucker. You, 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 you should get 500 bucks out for an independent shot. And then, so I said, hey, Todd. So I did. And, I, and uh, Todd booked me. Boom. And it ha- had me the same day uh, Eddie Gilmore was fired and Paul was hired. So it wasn't like Paul brought me in. He, he just took advantage of me being there, you know. And, uh, and he put the, that stupid mask on me in the gurney. Now, that wasn't a bad idea. It was a bad idea for me <clears throat> because a guy in Japan was already doing that. And it was a friend of mine. And, Don Salito. Yes. Yeah. I didn't want to think that I was stealing from him. Mm. And one, I didn't have to, you know. And, but it, it was a good thing. It's not for me. Anyways, that, that was uh, that's when I first started working for ECW. Do you know why Eddie Gilbert left? No. Um, no, I have no idea. No. Okay, then. Was it funny to think that when he first debuted for Eastern Champ, because it was still Eastern at the time, well, wasn't it? Todd Gordon was still bringing in former talent like King Kong Bundy and Jim Neidhart. Stan Hansen. Stan Hansen. It was just a mishmash. I mean, my old pal Don Morocco, Tito. Yeah, it was uh, It was the biggest independent there was, right? Yeah, yeah it was. Who Like, of all like the old like WWF stars at the time, who was Jimmy it called? Snooker. I think Jimmy Snooker was the champion. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, was, it was between Snooker and then Morocco and then Tito for the first year. That was it, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Of all the like old WWF stars, who were the coolest at the time to be Road right? Warrior Hawk. Yeah. Yeah, he was super cool. So was uh, Matt Bourne. You know, he was super cool. Yeah. That's right. Was he Scar for Life from the Doink thing <laughs> at the time? <laughs> no, I don't know. But he, he was cooler than you, you would think. So the, uh, these, I don't know if these are quick fire questions or whatever, but for, uh, when was the first time that Paul Heyman pretended he was uh, somebody else on the phone or told you he'd call you right back? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll skip <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon pretty soon after he met you I <clears throat> when did, how long did it take you to uh, figure out Paul Heyman's personality in that sense uh, it took a little while because you want to believe what you're saying when you're all, all true he put me over so big that King Kong couldn't kick my ass and why put me over so big and then uh <laughs> The, I see him put over someone else even bigger. <laughs> and with that guy the shit, you know, but this is how he was. He, he, he wasn't all bad. I, I like Paul. He said, you know, uh, he's a born carny. He's a born salesman. You know, whatever it is, he's going to make it bigger and you're going to pay more for it. Mm. You know? But he's like the most charming one. Yes. When was the first time you got like but, uh I think nothing from him. But, you know, what gets me is he's making that money while he make up for the guys he owe. Yeah. Well, it's not like he has to uh, go through the legal proceedings. Check you, check you, check there. It wouldn't even be nothing to him. How much do you think he owes in total to everybody? Everybody? Oh, I don't know. Probably a million or more. Yeah. It's not a lot to him. It's a lot to them. What are some of his more fun ways of saving money? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh well, uh, uh, what I got by putting it in his pocket. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> I'm thinking um, bereavement fairs, something like that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I see. Um, the videotapes is what made kept us afloat. Mm. Dreamer had videotape money. Had the videotape money go to him first, and then to Paul. So whatever Dreamer skimmed, and then Paul got skimmed, and then what was left over was for the rest of us. Yeah. Still. So, so I don't get it past 
I'm not saying Jimmy was a thief, but I don't see. I won't give it past him to take his, his share first. His, I'm sure he got his share first. When he said he didn't get paid, uh, uh, I question that. How important was Kevin Sullivan in the early days of ECW? I don't know. You no, know, pretty important because he had the influence. Uh, uh, I don't know. And he had a you know great mind. You know, and there, he was very influential. You know, what can I say? Because hmm? it, it was great, but. Uh, He's not overrated, but he's not underrated either. No, he's where he needs to be. Yes. Uh, what was the most interesting weapon the ECW faithful brought for you guys to use? <laughs> um, well, the, a chair. You know how that started? It wasn't uh, Extreme Rules. I had a match in Michigan with Taz, and I named him the Tasmanian Deathmatch, who was the fans bring the weapons. So whatever weapons they drawn, what was okay, we used them. If they were too dangerous, we didn't use them. So, like, they bring a VCR, they bring a Sindel, they bring a fan, you know, they bring this and that. Then that became ECW rules, extreme rules. And there was no extreme rules before that. <laughs> then, and fans didn't bring weapons before that, you know. Did anyone turn up and try and give you, like, a but knife I guess or something? The, what's that? Did anyone try and give you, like, a knife or something to use? No, uh, not a knife, but one time someone gave me a syringe just to go to the Yeah. So I did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Shame to waste it on somebody else. <laughs> what was the What was the funniest one someone brought? I mean, a canoe. I remember once. Yeah, I did on WCW. Somebody brought a, uh, an inflatable dolphin, and Public Enemy used it. Yeah, and sold it. Like hit them. Ah. Public Enemy was just. Sh- <laughs> you just. <laughs> it was the shits. They were. <laughs> it's, uh, what do you remember? Of, as far as WCW's legitimate dealings with ECW back in around 94. So I know back in the day, they had like Bobby Eaton there and Arn Anderson and Cats Jan. That was nothing to do with WCW. That was their own private book. Right. You know, they didn't, it wasn't companies. It was uh, them doing Paulie a favor. Right. Was this a Kevin Sullivan sort of uh, hand in it kind of thing as no, well? No, it was a Paulie and Arn friendship, Paulie and Bobby's friendship, none knew it to Kevin. 